Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Canadian Young Physicist Tournament channel. This time, we will take a look at magnetic levitation. I think this is one of the coolest problems of IYPT 2020. I can't wait to show you this. So let's get started. Essentially, under certain conditions, the stir bars of a magnetic stirrer can levitate in a viscous fluid. This levitation is incredibly stable and can last for hours. This video is inspired by an article published in Physical Review Letters titled Magnetic Levitation Stabilized by Streaming Fluid Flows. I am simply summarizing the author's descriptions and reproducing them on video. To make this, I got a magnetic stir with an RPM display. This is critical as it allows me to quickly read out the driving magnet's angular velocity. I also got several beakers and stir bars. For the viscous fluid, I bought several bottles of glycerol. The preparation is also quite simple. I just pour the glycerol into the beaker, drop in the stir bar, and turn up the stirring speed. If all goes well, the stir bar should begin to levitate. If you observe the start of the levitation, you will notice that there is some hysteresis behavior. The state of the system depends on its history. When the drive angular velocity is low, the stir bar is synchronized with the magnet underneath. As the drive angular velocity is increased, the bar will suddenly jump up into the fluid. The drive angular velocity suddenly increases since the magnets become decoupled. We can define this angular velocity as omega up. The bar then starts its levitation. Once the levitation begins, you can increase the drive angular velocity and the levitation will generally persist. The bar rotates and reverses direction several times per revolution depending on the drive angular velocity. This is called the waggle. When the drive angular velocity is lowered, the bar will not return to the synchronized motion at omega up. It will begin its decay back to the synchronized motion at a drive angular velocity below omega up. We denote this angular velocity as omega down. In summary, the levitation does not only depend on the drive angular velocity, but it also depends on the direction you approach a particular angular velocity. Between omega up and omega down is the range of drive angular velocities for stable levitation. As the bar levitates, the waggle angular velocity and the waggle amplitude changes with the drive angular velocity. The higher the drive angular velocity, the smaller the waggle amplitude, and the smaller the waggle angular velocity. If we observe the waggle carefully, we could see that the higher the drive angular velocity, the lower the bar levitates. The bar almost touches the bottom of the beaker when the drive angular velocity is very high. In some cases, as the angular velocity gets high, the bar will tend to drift towards the edge of the container and might do a flip on its way towards the edge. The bar will then get trapped, its tail will waggle, and it will orbit around the center of the drive magnets. When the drive angular velocity gets low again, it will be sucked back to the center and enter the synchronized rotation once again. The stir bar that the paper used is about 25 mm long and 7 mm wide. This is more or less a standard size for the levitation. I also try to levitate other sizes of stir bars. For smaller stir bars, the motor is powerful enough to drive the bar to a high angular velocity. However, it is still not enough to make the bar jump up. To address this issue, I had to raise the beaker up away from the platform. This allows the bar to become decoupled from the magnet below and the levitation can be started. For larger stir bars, the synchronized angular velocity is very low due to the high viscous drag. The same technique can be used to initiate the levitation. For the large bar, 
it is very easy for the bar to drift to the edge when using a large beaker. I never got a successful levitation with a large bar and a large beaker combination. When I switched to the smaller beaker, the levitation was successful. The edge effects of the fluid flow could actually enhance the levitation stability. I summarized my attempts in this graph. I plotted the omega up and the omega down against the cross-sectional area of the stir bar. As we can see, the smaller bars have a wide range of stable omegas, and the large bar is very difficult to levitate without the edge effects. The upwards arrow indicate that my magnetic stirrer is not powerful enough to reach the omega up. I had to lift up the beaker to start the levitation. I also plotted the beaker diameter against the angular velocities for a 30 by 8 mm stir bar. This indicates that sometimes a smaller beaker can actually make the levitation easier to achieve. As always, this phenomenon has more physics behind it than what I can state in a short video. I hope that this can get you started on your own exploration. I look forward to seeing what your explanations are. I'll leave you with a few more clips. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. I'll see you next time.